So we've got a Durham report. That's Prosecutor John Durham. Been working for three years on the uh, Trump-Russia conspiracy hoax uh, problem. That report has dropped. We've got a president who has identified the greatest threat to America as being basically white Christian males. And that's his definition, of course, of white supremacy is white Christian males. Hmm. We've got a hero who saved people on a subway from a criminal who was and has threatened to do bodily harm to others and was doing bodily harm to others, being charged with murder because of the death of that criminal in the event. We've got things that are so out of shape and bent out of shape and so upside down that it's really hard to see how there's any way out of this. And I'm here to tell you there is only one way out of this. What's really going on and what has the Lord already said about it? That's what we're going to talk about today. So stay tuned. Okay, we're here. This is Last Day's Awakening. I'm Jimmy, your host. I'm glad that you are with me. Be sure to like and subscribe if you would. We uh, we have so many things that are happening. Uh, you could you could focus all of your attention right now on on Israel and uh, this approaching war. Some would call it the Psalm 83 war. I call it the Zechariah chapter 12 war. Doesn't matter. It's a war. It's a war that's coming. Uh, we see all of it. And, and it's all just progressing. We're wondering, probably most of all, how fast or how quickly this is all going to transpire, because we have this sense across the board that the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, is here. It's, I mean, we are, we are at the door. Uh, the door's open. The foot is halfway across the threshold. I mean, you can use all kinds of... <laughs> Uh, euphemisms or um, colorful words to describe how close we are to the harpazo, the catching away, the time when the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, soon to be known as the bride of Christ, will be caught away from this mess, this cesspool that we are in. The question is, what does the scripture say about what is happening right now. Where did it come from? What is the progression? And I find it very fascinating. I want to take you today into the progression of the release of the wrath of God. Now, understand this. The wrath of God is already being poured out on uh, certain, um, I, I, I don't. I was going to say classes of people. That's not, that's not what I want to say, because then we're in a class warfare, warfare situation. But I'm talking about the corruption of mankind when corruption reaches a certain point the lord be, he, he pulls back he gives it over and in the giving of it over his wrath is expressed by the consequences of what they do if you understand what i'm saying there's a day coming when the wrath of god will be poured out on mankind it's called the seven year and it's seven years and it's all the wrath of god i keep getting that argument towards me all the time that's fine uh you you Read your word. This is seven year period of time. Seven, 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 seven. I can say it over and over again. It's all the wrath of God. The church is not here. Church will be delivered from God's wrath. Revelation 3:10. It's it's there. He will spare us from the time of testing that's coming upon the whole world. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. We are not appointed unto wrath, but unto salvation. Praise God. So the wrath of God will be poured out on mankind. It will be a time of utter chaos, utter terror. Uh, it will be a time when the enemy is consuming and people are consuming one another through violence. And, and there will not be law other than the tyrannical law of this one who will arise that we know quite non-affectionately as the Antichrist. Okay, 
So what is happening right now? What has been going on? Why is it that we could sit here and say, as the Durham report has been released, that nothing is going to happen because of corruption? That's why we can say that. We see the corruption from the top down. We see the corruption that has permeated not only the rulers of our of our governments, that's all the way down to local governments, doesn't mean every local government. I'm sure there are villages out there, small towns, 300 people or less, where they're... They, they might have really a wonderful government, but corruption finds a way and it has found a way because the floodgates have opened and a blanket of evil has fallen upon this world. We see it. We see the results of it. So corruption itself is so inbred. It's so deep. It's so infested within justice in our world and government in our world and even in the heart of mankind in our world that there will be no turnaround we are heading toward judgment our only hope of course and the hope and the great hope and that we hold on to and we want you if you do not know this hope we want you to take hold of this hope by faith is jesus christ Jesus came to die for our corruption, the corruption in the heart of mankind. The heart of man is exceedingly wicked, the scripture said. The scripture also says there is none righteous, no, not one. And so all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We see it throughout the scripture. We are corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. And yet Jesus came to die for our sins, our corruption, so that our corruption, our sins, our destitution, the the evil of sin in our lives, that would all be forgiven as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He becomes our Savior. He saves us from the wrath of God that is poured out against sin and will be ultimately poured out against sin. So that's why we challenge you. And I challenge you over and over, receive the gift, receive the gift, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, express your faith in him, receive by faith what he has done, and call him who he is. He is Lord, and confess that he is Lord. Believe that he has been raised from the dead. You will be saved. You'll be changed. You'll be transformed. You will be brand new. Born again. Do that. So where does this corruption come from? Well, I want to read some scripture, so let's, let's do a quick share screen. I want to also, as I do this, thank uh, so many for commenting on the on the uh, last video, last couple of videos that I did, maybe two videos ago, last video, I don't remember. I'm doing shorts now too, so that's always interesting. But I asked, uh, to, talked about uh, expanding a little bit the ministry of this channel and, and how I presented and so many responded and said, yeah, go for it. Uh, the question will be time in on my side of it, but um, uh, that, that's kind of why, uh, why I wanted to know if you would receive what I would do, uh, then I would be able to invest the time. Um, so thank you for responding. Okay, we're in Romans chapter 1. We're going to start reading at verse 18. I'm going to break it down as we go. This is verses 18 through 32. But I want you to hear this and see it see it clearly. Because one of the, um, one of the manifestations of the evil described in this passage of Scripture or the evil that is a result of a process described in this passage is the overwhelming, uh, and it's all lie and it's all deception, but the overwhelming power that has been given to uh, the LGBTQ letter, letter, letter community in persuasion and power and the ability to cancel in this culture, to cancel anybody who disagrees with them, including believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see the progression of how that has all come about and why there is only one hope, and that hope is Jesus, and that hope is judgment. That's hard to say, isn't it? Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, 4. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men. And here's what they do who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 
even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because, listen to this, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now, I want to explain this for for the reason that it says, because although they knew God, that idea does not presuppose relationship. What it presupposes is knowledge, that there was an understanding of the knowledge. There's an understanding that God exists, that God made everything, that God has done what he has done and has revealed it through nature through the stars, through the, the the building blocks that we see all around us in nature, in creation, and I'm going to qualify nature as creation. And they knew that, and yet they turned away from it. They suppressed that truth. They suppressed that knowledge. They suppressed that those attributes of God that are clearly seen in creation, and they suppressed it in their own unrighteousness. In other words, they chose unrighteousness rather than seeking and pursuing the knowledge of the truth. They chose unrighteousness. Now, that's because of the seedbed of sin in every man. All have sinned and fallen short of, of God's glory. We were bo we're born, we are born in Adam's sin, and we will manifest Adam's sin at a certain point, even though there's a certain point we don't know uh, we call it the age of innocence, and that, and that can be different. I'm not going to debate that issue right now. However, everyone is going to sin at some point because of the sin nature that we possess from Adam. That's why we need to be born again, not of the first Adam. We're born of the first Adam, but we need to be born of the second Adam through the Spirit of God. And the second Adam does not have the contamination or the corruption of the first Adam. He was not born of Adam's seed. He's born of the seed of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so please understand that's how this works. But people in their unrighteousness suppress the knowledge of God. They suppress the understanding. They choose to do it. They chose to believe in evolution. They chose to believe that there is no God. They chose to believe in such a way, either even agnostically or in complete athe um, atheism, that God is either aloof, separated, or he can't be understood in any way, shape, or form. Or God is within us as human beings, we are little gods, or there is no God whatsoever, and all you get is flesh and blood, and it's going to die, and it's going to be done. You have those philosophies, those lies, and those deceptions that come because man has chosen to suppress the truth and follow after the unrighteousness of his heart instead of finding and looking for the way that God has presented for us to come out of that unrighteousness and have everlasting life in righteousness. The old philosopher, pardon me, I'm on a rabbit trail. The old philosopher, uh, the mother of Forrest Gump, always said, stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> oh, oh. We're like sheep gone astray. It's just it's the stupidity of mankind is really being seen right now because we have suppressed the truth. I say we in general terms as humanity, but the Lord has revealed himself clearly. And then the gospel presentation reveals clearly what the Lord did and has done and will do for those who believe on him. And the remedy is there. The remedy is in. The fix is in. And it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we say, thank the Lord for that. So professing themselves, well, back up a little bit. Uh, for since, uh, I'm going to read this again, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. They, they glorified themselves, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds, four-footed animals, and creeping things. Okay, you could even say creepy things. Demonic spirits. So we're talking about idolatry, man worshiping himself, or man creating idols and worshiping the creation rather than the creator. Three things happen here. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. That ties directly into 
this um this wording right here in in my mind uh creeping things you know we look at it as maybe worms or whatever i'm going to put that in gray so that you understand but creeping things in the scripture actually deal with unclean spirits we know where unclean spirits uh came from uh, to a certain extent the word gives this revelation as we study it out that the unclean spirits are the spirits of those hybrid humans uh, before the flood, uh, the Nephilim, spirit of the Nephilim, the Rephaim, all the offspring, all the um, all the bloodlines that were corrupted by the enemy himself, uh, both before and after the flood, the same thing happened some at some point with the iniquity of the Amorites. Um, in in the what we call the Holy Land in Canaan, and uh, it was uh, it came to completion by the time Israel was brought out of Egypt, and they were to go in and clean out those bloodlines. They literally were; they were hybrid, unsavable people, um, not human, and yet not angelic. So go research that out. You'll see that that's the creeping thing. The spirit of those would not depart. The spirit would the spirit of those those people groups uh, would remain. They would uh, they would demons if you want to say ghosts this is where ghosts come from i've heard a lot of people say there's no such thing as ghosts yes there are they're the creeping things they're the unclean spirits they they attach themselves to people they attach themselves to places they they infiltrate they possess they have to find a place that their greatest search is to find out a physical body to live in and they're they're in constant torment and therefore they torment the individuals that they live it's called demon possession demonism bondage to demons however you want to say that so god gave them up to uncleanness in in other words the lord is saying if you're going to worship all of that then you're going to suffer the consequences of worshiping that and i'm giving you over to the results of that uncleanness he gave them up to the uncleanness and the lust in their hearts the sexual drive to commit acts that are going to be described a little bit later, but uh, even before those, the severity went on the increase, there was always the lust of the heart to do what the heart wanted to do, and the heart is exceedingly corrupt. I think you're following me here. And to dishonor their bodies among themselves. And that can happen, that, that can be in any way. We tend to focus in on sexually immoral behavior, perverted behavior, but it can also be in mutilations, uh, even murder, doing things that dishonor their bodies among themselves. And the hardest thing that we, the, what we see going on in the world, I want to get my wording right here. Uh, I see all of this happening right now. This move to take children who have been purposely confused in their gender identity. They've been purposely confused and are being misled and being deceived and parents are being deceived and parents have gone stupid in many ways. And children are being mutilated. People are allowing themselves to be mutilated. There's no such thing as the Hippocratic Oath anymore, do no harm. There's no such thing as that among the medical community. There might be individual medical doctors or uh, professionals who believe the Hippocratic Oath, but by and large, it's been thrown out the door for money, for gain. And they're mutilating children. They're mutilating teenagers. They're they're convincing them that, them that, uh, that they need to have their bodies mutilated and have their, somehow have their hormonal systems regulated in a different way so they can live out their identity. And their identity is confusion. And here it is right here. They are dishonoring their bodies among themselves. And it's horror. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. I love that little refrain right there. Number two, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. I did a short video a short they're 60 seconds long that's what a short is or 30 seconds or 15 seconds and i did a short um using the release of the durham report which is which will go nowhere that 
nobody's really going to do anything about it because of the corruption. But I quoted from Psalm chapter 12, verse 8, which says this. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness permeates a nation. In other words, when the vile is received as being normal, then wickedness is released and it prowls on every side. We see that throughout the world. We see that in every part of the world. That that vileness shows up in, and is showing up in the United States of America in, in various forms of vile hatred, uh, violence, and the vile behavior of uh, of people when it comes to uh, sexual behavior, sexual identity, sexual provocativeness, all of that. Um, it, it's all in front of us right now because we've glorified as a nation vileness and the world has glorified that which is vile. And so wickedness has been released, guys. It's right there. It's in the scripture. We're reading it. Wickedness has been released on the earth. So for this reason, God gave them over to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the nat natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. Okay, that's number three. Let's talk about this number two thing. Understand that God has turned them over, gave them up to their vile passions, and uh, those vile passions have presented themselves in this behavior of same-sexedness. I made up a word there. I just don't want to get flagged and cut off of YouTube if I actually use the terminologies that we all know. Sad, isn't it? But I want to share the gospel on YouTube, so I have to be careful. You understand what I'm saying. Billy with Bobby. All right? Susie with Sally. Uh, and enjoying it and there's something that actually happens in the physiology of people who do these things. Well, there it is. The Lord gives them over and they burn in lust for one another and they don't retain the knowledge of God any longer. And the Lord gives that revelation of vileness in them. They reap the consequences of it. But in the reaping of the consequences, the entire society is affected. So God gave them over to a debased mind. Some of your versions will say reprobate mind. I've uh, I'm going to drop down. I've I've put the the meaning of this from the Strong's Concordance, Strong's definitions. Uh, it's the word odikimos, and it comes from two words. The first one is, is ah uh, or the alpha. That's the first letter of the Greek alphabet. But ah uh, comes in there as that alpha right here. A, a dokimos, and uh, basically the alpha means the first, but it also is used as, as first or for, uh, foremost in privation. It can be union or unity. In other words, fully unified as being like total and complete or privation, which is the ultimate. So the ultimate in privation is really how this word can be translated. The second is dokimos, which means approved. So we're talking about the anti-approval. Can I say that? Th this is the opposite of approved, and it's in the opposite extreme. In other words, these, are, these aren't approved by God. These are so absolutely opposite of approved that they are uh, approved, <laughs> all right? Uh, Adokimos is kind of like the ultimate disapproval from God. Some would argue, well, sin is sin. Yes, sin is sin. Jesus died for all sin. But some sin, understand, affects 
the, the institutions that God has set up. And it is God that has set up the institution first of marriage. He's also set up the institution of government to reflect his government, but it doesn't. And Israel didn't. But government is an institution, and, and the Lord will be the supreme governor eventually. So government comes from God, and especially um, uh, revealed in the righteous governing of God. And that is there, the institution of the family, the institution of government, the institution of culture, right? These, This ultimate opposite of approval, this disapproval by God is seen in the actions of these people because these actions affect culture, family, and even government, and to the point where the mind or the reasoning within the family, within the government, and within the culture itself is twisted. It becomes twisted and chaotic. It becomes unreasonable in its lust. It becomes absolutely anti-God in everything that it does. So it does affect the family. And we see families being affected. Of course, that's the enemy's desires to destroy family, to destroy marriage, to destroy the institution of one man and one woman. Let a man leave his father and his mother and be joined into his wife, cleave to his wife. That means one flesh. The two shall become one flesh. And what God has put together, let no man put asunder. And I believe that's more than just the individual man and individual woman coming into union. It, it applies there, but I believe it is also referring to the institution of marriage itself. What God has done, what God has put together, what God has joined in this institution of marriage, let no man come and corrupt that or put it asunder, stomp on it, put it under their feet. And that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what has been happening for the last generation, at least. Uh, but it's on steroids right now. It's absolutely on steroids to destroy the culture. And the enemy knows this. So he's given them over to the debased mind or the reprobate mind to do things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, and and the the all carries over here. Okay, all carries over, all sexual immorality, all or ultimate wickedness, ultimate covetousness, all malicious, ultimate maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. This is disgusting, isn't it? They're whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. They figure out more ways to do evil, and we see that happening before our very eyes. Disobedient to parents, undiscerning. Why? Because they no longer have the ability to discern. They they refuse the knowledge of God. That's the only place discernment comes from is from the knowledge of God. They're untrustworthy. Can't trust them. Can't trust them as far as you can throw them unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also appro approve of those who practice them. This is the invasion of the culture uh, of the planet right now that is reaching a crescendo that must bring about the end. It must bring about that seven-year period of time in which the world is judged. The nations are judged, and Israel comes to redemption by turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is also described by Paul. I could easily go and break down Matthew chapter 24, but there's enough places in the Word of God we don't necessarily have to go have that argument. Oh, that was only for the Jews. 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Wow. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. There it is. Putting asunder marriage. Commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Okay, so this reprobate mind actually shows up in in, in um, suppressing certain food sources now in these days because those food sources somehow contribute to 
the overload of carbon in the atmosphere and are causing climate change. The methane found in the feed yard. So we've got to do away with the eating of meat and live as vegetarians. Wow. Wow. Mm. I could say a lot. I'm not going to say it. You, I think you just felt the wow with me. We see this in action right now under the lie, under the falsehood, under the deception, under this wave of deception called climate change. Yeah, the climate does change. Yes, it does. And it is going to change hugely during the time of the tribulation. It stands to reason it's changing now, but it's not because of what man is doing with cars and everything else. It's because of the sin of mankind. The earth itself is groaning for the sons of righteousness to be revealed, Romans chapter 8. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days. Okay, so this first verse says, in latter times. But now, in the second letter to Timothy, Paul narrows it down to the last days. Perilous times will come. And here it is, the description of today. Men will be lovers of themselves. You can take that two ways, either so narcissistic that they love themselves or they love themselves among themselves as men love men, men with men doing unspeakable things. Okay. Lovers of money. So in love with money that that's all you think of. So in love with prosperity, sadly, uh, that's all you do. Boasters, proud blasphemers. This boasting and this pride is actually part of the Antichrist spirit where it stands and blasphemes God and he calls himself God eventually, will, believes himself to be God and will call himself God and blaspheme the one who sits on the throne. That's the Antichrist spirit. It's, it's right here before us. They're disobedient to parents. It's always been. It's always been disobedience to parent. But understand, this is the saturation of the entire culture and all the cultures of the world, disobedience to, uh, to parents is a manifestation. And parents don't really seem to care. I, I listened to a mother, rabbit trail. Okay, here it is, rabbit trail. Listen to a mother in a tire store the other day, talking her to her sweet, precious sweetie pie. In fact, she called her sweetie pie. And so we're going to go out to our car now. And sweetie pie sat down in a chair and wouldn't move. And so mom kept saying, well, I'm leaving now. You'll have to stay and help work in the shop. That didn't budge the little belligerent. <laughs> it didn't butt her at all. And finally she said, well, dad's home waiting for lunch. So we, be, we better go, uh, we better go get our food or we're going to be hungry and you'll have to stay here all night and not have any food. So she's using these stupid, stupid, the stupid reasoning of a parent who has no idea how to discipline a child. And finally she starts counting. She does a countdown, starts at 10, nine, sweetie pie, eight. Seven. She goes off, and the kid doesn't budge. Kid doesn't budge. People have been struck with the spirit of stupid. I I'm sorry. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? Disobedient to parent, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors. Durham report. Despisers of good and brutal go along with that too. Haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away. The only, the only thing that we should have with these types of people is the connection to share the gospel with them. But that's it. We should not, we should not practice what, what they do or even accept what they do. Um. And that's in the political world as, as well. Hearer, beware. I'm not even going to talk about parties. Luke chapter 21, what must we do? This is just a simple thing that the Lord gives in, in Luke chapter 21, verses 34 to 36, as we see all of these things. First of all, we know we're supposed to, as we see these things beginning to happen, lift up our heads because our redemption draws nigh. I believe that's Luke chapter 19. But he says, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the cares of this life. 
that that day come upon you unexpectedly. Or it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. I'm going to let that word stand on its own. I'm not going to try to explain it. Jesus said it. It would pay us well to live this way, to take heed to ourselves, to take heed that our hearts stay true, correct, and not give in to all of this stuff. Number two, that we watch, and that's what we're doing on this channel. We are watching, and that we pray always. Those three things, those three things take us to the overcomer. They make us an overcomer. Letters to the seven churches. Preaching a series on that, on those churches and, and the overcomers who hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And um, it's very important that in these days we understand what the Spirit is saying to the seven churches, because the, the churches, those seven churches represent the condition of the church today. And there's repentance that needs to happen within the church. Take heed to yourself. Watch and pray always. And, and th that is that is the way to be ready for anything that would happen in these days. Anything. Anything. I'm telling you, anything. So can we do that? Would you do that? Would you commit to doing that? Understand where we are. Understand that this is the time to do these things. It's time to understand that the word gives us the progression of evil in a generation, gives us the progression of evil when a people turns away from the knowledge of God and follows after its own lustful heart, as our culture has done and our culture is doing now, and it is in progression. It is deepening. It's going further in that direction. And so the wrath of God is being revealed in the consequences but soon the wrath of God is going to be poured out. But for you, believer in Jesus Christ, we are not destined unto that wrath of the tribulation. Some have talked about the wrath of man versus the wrath of God. Well, we're under the wrath of man right now. We really are. A shooting out in front of a Christian school two days ago killed four people. The shooter was killed, of course. Two police officers were shot in the process, but it was just Sunday that I told my church how easily now we will begin to hear of shootings at churches again, and the media will suppress it if it doesn't follow their narrative, but persecution is here. Culture is canceling the truth, and you are the truth. You are part of the way, the truth, and the life. You are part of Jesus. You are his body. And so you're being canceled. That's called persecution. Some places it's deeper than others where it does include bodily harm and even martyrdom. And that could very well happen quickly. And it is happening in the confines of our nation. It is happening. It is happening. Persecution by the enemy. Persecution for being a, a follower of Jesus Christ. Persecution is here. And physical harm coming to believers doesn't mean it permeates everything, but it could. But we stand strong in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in a citizenship or an election in this world. Our hope and our citizenship is in heaven. It is in the kingdom of God. We work in this world. We live in this world. We do what's necessary to bring the gospel to people in this world, and that should be the joy of our heart. That should be our mission and our goal all the time, listening to the Spirit of God as He leads us, as we walk through this life, leads us to say things, to do things, to reach out and touch people, to help the poor, to do whatever is necessary to bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news of salvation to people in this world right now. That's our mission. That's our goal. It's what we do. And we look up and we pray all the time. Please do that, would you? If you haven't received Jesus, if you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, I I ask you, please, please, please look to the Lord Jesus. Seek the Lord Jesus. Understand that he died for your sins and mine. He died having lived a perfect, sinless life to fulfill 
the Old Testament law, he had to die as the sacrificial lamb. And then he rose again from the dead. He took the reins of the keys, the, the power of death. He took it upon himself and defeated it for all who will believe in him. So he holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's worthy of our trust. Please trust him and believe on him and receive his gift. You will be born again and born into the kingdom of God. That's exactly what I'm challenging you to do. For the rest of us, wow, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can do this. You can do this. Stay strong. Stay true. Keep prayed up. Keep sharing Jesus. Jesus is coming soon.